Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, bringing about something that has been long requested by many of my viewers. Back in July, to go along with the anniversary of the Roswell incident, not only did I show the Transformer Cosmos, but the following day I showed off what would have been his GoBot counterpart, Pathfinder. Well, much to my surprise, there was an incredible amount of comments one from my viewers stating that they wanted to see some GoBot reviews. Apparently, I struck an interest with Pathfinder. Now, GoBots have made frequent appearances in many of my Transformer vehicles and other reviews. Blah, 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 blah. But this is the first time I've given serious thought to actually doing reviews on the GoBots. So, let's kick it off with the Renegade's leader, Psykill. Now, this is the original version of Psykill. He was released in 1984. He just jumped out of my fingers. He was also available in 1985. He would end up being discontinued in 1986 when the toy line was ended. However, late in 1985, another version of Psykill would be released, painted up in a more evil-looking color scheme. And, of course, to be honest with you folks, I kind of like this color scheme more. But that's just personal preference. Psykill would also be released in the GoBots line as one of their Super GoBots, and he would have a model kit based off of him during the GoBots line as well. So that gives him four different ways to be made available. Now when you compare him to his Transformers counterpart of Megatron, Megatron only got two toys released. Three, if you count Galvatron. So what says you to that, Transformer fans? Anyway, despite the small size, Psykill does have a fair amount going for him, especially in the terms of the articulation. Like many of the Transformers of his same size and bigger, he can rotate his arms all the way around at the shoulder. They're somewhat tied together, so sometimes the other arm moves as well. He does have a joint at his knees that allows him to bend his knees, but he has one in the hip as well, so that he can be put into a full sit-down position. So he has quite a fair amount of posability. Of course, much of this is used for converting him into his vehicle mode, but still, that comes in, that's quite a lot of articulation in a little tiny figure. Now let's go ahead and convert Psykill into his alternate mode. The first thing we're going to want to do is we need to gently remove the wheels from his shoulders. Supposedly, as shown in an episode of the cartoon, he can use those as, his, as weapons, if need be. First thing we're going to do is fold his arms up, close to a surrender pose. We want to get them up so they line up with the grooves in his shoulders. We push one in. And then you're going to want to put a wheel inside his hands. fit in there and then push the other arm in so that he grips the wheels. Then next, down here at his legs, I'm going to shift them a bit so that we can put this other wheel inside. Spread his legs just a little bit so that they connect. And then bend at the knee and bend at the hip. Now, to finish him off, Psykill has this little motor it connects not only with the two bars into his chest, but these two clamps on the back side of it fit into his knees. We start by mounting it into the chest, 
Then you just line it up on the knees and gently press them into it. Very gently. And then there we go. Psykill is in his alternate mode. A futuristic looking motorcycle. Psykill was one of the first of the machine robo toys that were released in Japan. Which is where Tonka got the GoBots line from. And the early guys were more designed to be sci-fi futuristic type toys. So, they kind of look different compared to the others that came after them. As some have noted, that the way Psykill looks, it would be very difficult or uncomfortable for a man to go for a ride on him. Which kind of works out best. The way Psykill was presented in the GoBots cartoon, he really didn't seem to want anybody to be able to be on top of him. But of course, Psykill spent most of the cartoon with his head pointed upward for some strange reason. I mean, you'd think he'd have some means to be able to always see where he was going in the first place in this mode, but he always seemed to be in the bike mode and have his head up and visible. They did the same thing with Scooter on that, and I never understood that. Anyway, how well does he roll? Kind of fair, folks. I mean, the back wheel kind of wedges up on us a little bit. Let's see if we try it again. Yeah, part of it could also be the age of this toy. Freewheeling, he doesn't do very well. But if you hold on to him... Doesn't seem to do too bad. Let's see. Let's get the other one out here. Yeah. Doesn't seem to do too too terribly bad. I guess it kind of depends on how well the sample of yours is. Attach it so you guys can get a good close look. Especially at the wicked paint job on that other one. What can I say? I just, I just love that paint job. Psykill is also one of the few GoBots to have some loose parts, so let's take a look at him right now. He has two of these motorcycle wheels. And of course, as an added bonus, these tires are indeed rubber. So, best of luck finding a good set of tires, but... That's not too difficult to find. Just finding some decent chrome on here on the hub. That's the try. That's the tricky part. And of course, what's probably the most commonly lost piece on Psykill is his engine, since it more or less just sits in there, and you really don't have a place to put it. On the robot mode, so it probably it ends up getting lost fairly frequently. Of course, the super version of Psykill solves this problem, but at the cost of some other stuff, and we'll talk about that when I get around to doing the super Psykill version. But anyway, there you go, his loose parts. Now, of course, as the leader of the bad guys, there's definitely going to be comparisons between Psykill and the Transformers leader, Megatron. And in a lot of ways, I find those comparisons to be more biased than actually practical as is many of the comparisons that are done between the Transformers and the GoBots. Too many people apply their own personal bias to the two toy, between the two toys on there, and don't do a very accurate comparison. In the cartoon, both of them were sort of almost the same, but not entirely. 
Both of them basically were commanders of their respective units militarily. And their schemes did involve getting things from Earth to be able to conquer their respective worlds of Cybertron or Gobatron at the hands of their ally, from the hands of their enemies. But that's about where the similarities end between the two. Megatron was certainly the more violent of the two leaders. Psykill, however, did have his moments, but he seemed to be more the long-term thinker, as his schemes tended to think more for the very nature of Gobatron itself. He didn't really seem that interested in conquering Earth, whereas Megatron wanted Earth as well as Cybertron. But mainly, Megatron wanted Earth to milk it for its resources to save Cybertron. A lot of the lore that's developed for Megatron paints him as a gladiator who opposed the natural order of how things were led and decided on Cybertron. And as he discovered some varying means to improve their species, he pursued those uh, goals in order to prove his point of superiority over the ruling classes of Cybertron. Psykill, on the other hand, did start out somewhat as a politician on Gobatron, being a member of Gobatron's ruling council. When they had problems dealing with renegade Gobots and potential alien invaders, Psykill's plan involved having all of the, the Gobatron Council transfer its power and authority to somebody who would or could make the tough decisions, i.e. himself. When that didn't happen, he quit the Council and went off to join the Renegades, effectively becoming their leader and making them more organized in battle, thus betraying his friend Leader One. In ways, some of the Transformer lore has reversed that in the ser early series of books that was done up a few years back on the Transformers. This seemed to be mirrored between Orion Pax and Megatron. They had befriended each other and tried to work with the Transformer ruling council to improve things. The council eventually did rule on, tra on their proposal, but favored Orion Pax as leader, and Pax would later become Optimus Prime. Megatron believed that somehow he had been betrayed by his friend and turned against him in that moment. So as you can see, so as you can hear from that, my friends, there's a lot of similarities as well between the two characters, and those should really more be embraced by the fandom and not criticized for being an easy cop out. Especially when in the early stages of development for the Gobots, Psykill was meant more to be a criminal mastermind, not a military leader. As the Challenge of the Gobots cartoon came on after the Transformers cartoon, Tonka had Hanna-Barbera change that so that it became more military to be able to counter the Transformer cartoon. Whether this did any good or not is really up for debate, as while both of them were not exactly the best media to portray the characters, it did give us a way to see these characters in action on screen. As a toy, I can understand most of the people's gripes about Psykill and many of the other smaller Gobots, but I also find them to be very unreliable. One should check them out themselves and make their own decisions. But since you're listening to me on my channel, I'm going to give you my thoughts. 
I liked the GoBots. I always did. I collected them alongside the Transformers in my youth, so I never really had a problem getting one or the other. As an adult collector, though, I will admit I went more with the Transformers first than with the GoBots, but that's only because I could find a book on the Transformers to tell me what I was looking for. I didn't find anything for the GoBots, so I kinda had to go at it on my own. And about two years into the collection, I did, and I've not regretted it for a nanosecond. Psykill always was one of my favorites growing up as a toy. I had the black one as a child. I always loved it. I found uh, the appropriate colors because it made him look evil. As opposed to the original, which was done more in heroic colors due to the fact that in the Japanese media, he was a hero character. In fact, the anime Revenge of Kronos features Psykill in a heroic role. Something for many of you fans to go and check out sometime if you can find a copy of it. But as a toy, this was a fun toy to have as a child. The fictitious motorcycle definitely encouraged one's imagination. The only downsides to it is, namely, a lot of this chrome wear. A lot of this chrome does wear very easily, as it is noted on both of my samples, really. And there's also some fragility in the knee joint. You don't want to be removing the lower legs of Psykill too much, as that can break the tabs that hold him. So he is more fragile than many of the comparable Transformers, but he's just as durable as many of them. As a character, I would have liked to have seen the original way that Psykill was portrayed, more so than how he wound up being portrayed. There's nothing wrong with how it was done, given the context of it was done to compete with another toy line in the hopes of stealing it back the fans. But the original way of making him a criminal mastermind would probably make for an interesting way to look at them. The GoBots are cyborgs, not sentient machines like the Transformers. There is an organic brain inside them. So, that helps add some more fascination to it. And with the rise of a lot of criminal mastermind media that we see a lot, such as the Godfather movies or... Even the Sopranos TV show, to a certain extent, the gangster bits shown in Gotham, has uh, led me to wonder what, if any way, Psykill could have been performed in that way. How would he have acted? It might make for an interesting way to look at it. When compared to many of the other GoBot toys available, or even some of the Transformers, I think Psykill is a top-tier toy. This is a fun little toy. He goes well with the other GoBot accessories, especially his sitting-down ability. Works well for a feature on the GoBot playset Thruster. So, you can't argue with what you get with him. While you, all you see is what you get... If you add a spark of imagination to go with it, you can go far. Never forget imagination, my friends. This is a top-tier toy. Both of them. And that concludes my review of the GoBots Renegade Leader Psykill. If you like this review, please thumbs up it here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button below if you haven't done so already. Please also consider liking this video and share your thoughts on Psykill in the comments section below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.